Hello everybody, it's Justin Seeley back with you once again for another tipsquirrel.com exclusive tutorial. And in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create some really nice vintage effects on your photographs. This is stuff that you see all the time in different camera applications for iOS and Android and things like that. And so some of these can be really easily recreated in Photoshop and the best part about it is it's completely non-destructive. So let's take a look. This is actually going to be a vintage black and white effect that we create here. So what I'm going to do is work on this photo first and then we'll jump into another one and I'll show you actually how to reintroduce some color into the black and white photo once you're finished with the second photo. So with this one here I'm just gonna add a couple of things. I'm gonna come up and add an adjustment layer black and white and the defaults for this are usually fine so don't worry about tweaking any of this. You can always come back and do it later because this is after all an adjustment layer so we'll collapse that up for now. And then let's go down here and click on the adjustment layer icon again and let's add a levels adjustment. And the levels adjustment, I just want to come down here to the output slider and I want to take this over until this reads out about 45. Anywhere between 40 and 45 is usually okay for that. Depending on the photo, you may have to tweak that down or up. Basically what you're trying to do here is just sort of fade out the photo. Make it look as if it's been faded out. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here. And so an output level of 45 works pretty good. And let's collapse that up. The final thing I'm going to do is select the background layer, choose filter, convert for smart filters, that turns that into a smart object and now I'm going to go to filter, noise, add noise and inside of the noise I think anywhere between 2 and 5 percent works well, for this one I think 4 works pretty good and we'll hit OK. And then finally the last thing we're going to do is add a stroke to this to give it a border so let's double click on the right side of the layer, click on stroke, set it to inside and let's make sure the color is white and then let's increase the size quite a bit. I think for this particular one something like 45 works well. It's a pretty big photo. So let's do 45 pixels and hit OK. And there is my finished product almost like a little Polaroid or vintage photo booth type snapshot effect that we've created here. So that's really pretty neat and it's really easy and the best part is we've harmed no pixels whatsoever because we've done everything non-destructively with adjustment layers, smart filters, and layer styles. So that's really quick and really easy and easily customized later on down the road as well. Now let's jump over here to this other photograph and we're going to turn this into a vintage shot of the New York skyline even though it is a recent one because there's the New World Trade Center back there. So let's do the same process we did before. This time though I'm going to convert it to smart filters first. There we go. Then let's run our noise filter on there as well. Noise, add noise. And for this one I think 2% works well. There we go. And let's go ahead and add our stroke on there as well. This time inside. Change it to white. You can do a black stroke. It doesn't matter. And let's set this to about 35. I think that works well for this one. And let's hit OK. And so once we hit OK, that is going to apply all those to it. And I can collapse that up and we can start adding our effects. So let's go down. Let's choose black and white. And so once we have the black and white adjustment layer applied, we can collapse it up. And then we can go down and add our levels adjustment. Again, the levels adjustment is what allows us to fade this out, make it look real vintage. So in this case, I think I can push this up somewhere around 50 for this particular one. You might want to enter in the values with your number pad if you wanted to, or you could just tap with your keyboard keys or use the scrubby slider as well. Anyway, works just fine. So 50 works pretty well for this and then let's collapse that up. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over into the channels panel for just a moment and right here on the RGB composite channel I'm just going to hold down the command key on Mac, the control key on PC and click. And what that's going to do is load the lightness values of this document or the lightest portions of this photo. So let's go over to the layers panel now. Let's go down and let's choose photo filter this time. And when I do that, you're going to notice that a photo filter is being applied. And let's switch this over to a sepia tone. And let's increase the density quite a bit. And you'll notice that it's only being applied to certain areas of the photo. That's because I used that lightness of this photo as a layer mask. And I'll show you that in just a second. So let's do this. Let's collapse this up. And I'll hold down the Option key on Mac, the Alt key on PC, and click the layer mask. That way you can actually see the layer mask is indeed just the photo. And here's what we're going to do. 
we're going to run a quick levels command on it. So command or control L on our keyboard and I'm going to punch the highlights quite a bit and let's darken the shadows up quite a bit as well. And remember with layer masking, black conceals, white reveals, so anywhere that's black is not going to show the photo filter. Anywhere that's white will show the photo filter, so let's hit OK. And then once we do that, let's hold down the Option or Alt key again, click on that, there we go. So we've got only the highlights being affected by that area. And now what I'm going to do is add another photo filter, this time choosing a, let's choose something like a magenta color. That works well. You can also choose a custom color. I actually kind of like it if it's a little bit more of a deep purple color, something like that. And let's crank this density up quite a bit as well. Notice this is affecting the whole photo right now. I'm going to crank this up to 90% and then let's collapse that up. Now watch what I can do here. I can take the layer mask of the original photo filter. I can hold down the option or alt key and then click and drag it up. And when I release it on top of the other layer mask, it just replaces it. You may get a options dialog box asking whether or not you want to replace it. Just hit OK to that or say don't show that again, which is what I've done here. And once you do that, it should be just fine. And so now the problem is I have both of these affecting the same area. So what I need to do with this layer mask selected is I need to invert it. So I can do that with Command or Control I. And now I have a nice duotone like image. If I wanted to adjust the color here, all I have to do is Option or Alt click on this layer mask to see it and I can run a levels command on that as well. So I can kind of punch the highlights a little bit more, darken the shadows a little bit more, that adjusts how this is affecting this image, and Option or Alt click it again, we can see how that looks. If I want to change the colors, that's easy, just double click on the little icon here, change this color, let's change it to something like maybe a blue color. There we go, so now we've got a blue and sort of a sepia tone going on on this image, and you can create as many combinations of these as you want, and it really is a great way to non-destructively work on a photo, and yet at the same time make it look really vintage and really cool. So that's it for this exclusive tipsquirrel.com tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them on tipsquirrel.com, or you can reach me via my blog site at justinseely.com. You can also check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash seelyfb, and I'm also on Twitter at Justin Seeley. And if you'd like more information about the work that I do online, you can check out lynda.com slash Justin Seeley for all of my latest course releases. So thanks everybody for watching this tutorial. Again, my name is Justin Seeley, and I'll see you again real soon.